ብለዋል ወደቤ ፖፒላሪ ኑን አስማ ሙዚክ አም አ ሲሪል ኢንተርፕሪነር አም አ ፋማ አም ኢንቱ ሲድ ፕሮዳክሽን አም አ ቤካ አንድ ኤሌክቸራ ኢፍ አይ ጎ ቱ ሬንት ኦ ሊቭ አ ላንድ አስ አ ዎማን ዩ ዊል ዩ ትሪት ሚ ዩ ዉድ ዩ ዩ ዶንት ቱ ኩት አከኩረን ዋ ዉድ አይ ቴክ ማይ ላንድ አንድ ጊቭ ኢት ቱ ኤሞማን አይ ሜ ማታ ኬይ ቱ ኮና ሜ ማ ሰናአት ወና ያሪኛ ቲንግስ ላይክ ዳት people think it's nothing but it gets to you with time so for you to be able to access land with your own money to access land see i have to say engineer as my husband i want uh, i want to get a land can you please help me do it in your name if you are to spend a minute or two second or two minutes with somebody <laughs> later of our life who would that person be and why well Wow. If I would want to spend a minute or two with one person. The person who is dead or who is, is either alive. dead or alive, who would that be for you and why? Does it have to be a person? Yes. Wow. Hmm. I'll see my sisters. Okay not my sisters my husband <laughs> <laughs> wow. I don't want to create drama my dad will understand my mom will understand you know I love them but these two why hmm. I just to alhamdulillah they are my support pillar like they are my everything So I cannot be where I am today without them. Up the basic musan. This is talk to basic. On today's episode I am with Mama Z as how I call her but her real name is Zainab Lawal Godebi. She's an entrepreneur, a lecturer and a culinary chef a baker right? a baker and a farmer and a farmer so we would love to know like if you are to introduce yourself how will you introduce yourself okay um my name is um, Zainab Lord Wedebe popularly known as Mama Zik I'm a serial entrepreneur I'm a farmer I'm into seed production I'm a baker and a lecturer everything start from a scratch yes. how like especially right now that we know most of the farmers are people who and you see seed farming mm. so how did you get into farming from the okay um yes we all know agriculture let's say farming in this part of the country the northern part of the country is dominated by male Mil. so i grew up in a male dominated community because i grew up in the farm growing up my father is a farmer and my mother is a teacher so i was born in seed production i was raised in seed i speak seed i breathe seed i eat seed so seed is in the family that is what we do so you get it from family business yes it's a family business i took it over from my father but I have seen him doing seed since I I since I knew myself see, let's see let's let's put it that way farming or seed farming is male dominated area and from my own point of view as a layman when you say seed farming I would think like okay you are just farming to raise the seed so that you give other farmers to so but how does it it from professional point of view okay um so there is a difference between seed farming and green farming when you say you are a seed farmer they just think people tend to think you're just a normal farmer that will go to farm and plant and harvest and we eat we don't eat seeds what we this uh, seed farmers do is we produce the seed that the farmers will use to plant when you plant a grain not a seed there is always a difference and when we talk about seed 
we have three, uh, we have three different um, kinds of seeds. We have the breeder seed that is the one that the breeders produce. That is the parent uh, original parent material. Then we have the foundation seed, and we have the certified seed. What the farmers use to farm is the certified seed that we, the seed companies, produce. So you are the backbone of farming. Yes. In the nutshell. Sure. If truly you are a farmer and you want to follow the procedures, so we will have food security, high yield, protecting the ecosystem, the, back, the backbone or let's say the background, the foundation or the main, the key thing is seed. Agriculture starts with seed. Some people do say it starts with research. Yes, but yes, sometimes. The action part starts with Yes, seed. it starts with seed. So you said you started it. How did you take over? Like, because okay. doing the thing and doing a Other business things, is yes. different thing. Okay. Uh, you're, very, I, you're very familiar with the family. So our father and our mother had three of us, all girls. So being raised in that kind of community, everyone feels bad for him for not having a male child no. to take care of what he is building. So I just felt if a male child can do that, why not me? So I learned from him. I've seen him groom and raise so many seed producers. Now, as I can, if I can say it, I know he has groomed over 10 or 15 seed companies that are now doing very well in the ecosystem. So I worked with almost all of them. So I've seen how it works, the good and the bad and the upside, the downside of the business. Mm -hmm. So I learned from different people, honestly. So you come on. But you do a school. What? What we will feel like, okay, maybe she has done an MBA that helped her. Did you have an MBA in a business that supports you? Okay. So let me just give you a brief background about my education. I finished secondary school at 15. I got direct admission into university. But because I was so young, and I, had, I was so young, that is the main thing. I was not studying. I was... I was just there, so I was not passing and I was not feeling. Yeah, just average? Just below average, honestly. Below average. So I dropped out of school. My father enrolled me again in another school. Even there, I was not perf There, we can see I was just average. But I'm a very competitive person. I always like to be on top of my game. So I became so discouraged not being on top. I dropped out again for the second time. He enrolled me back. And uh, one day I had a fight with my immediate sister. Then she was about to graduate. And I was just there. I don't know what to do with my life. And we had a fight, normal siblings fight, she said. The words she used was, Dalla chende kikia, drop out kawai, said. That day I cried the whole day. I enrolled back, I graduated with a first class. I had my master's, a distinction, I have a PhD. And now, as we're speaking, I'm going back for another PhD. They said people who don't have a life hmm. or don't love themselves are the people who do PhD. Hmm. You are done with one PhD and you're enrolling for the next. What is the courage? Is that the same part be like the motivator or right now that you have the okay. motivator? That is what people see, but honestly, there is more to it. There is more to what people see in doing a PhD than just doing the PhD. PhD is not about uh, it's not about your grades or your what. It's the journey, the experience, what you get to learn and go through during the journey. And I was a very impatient person. When I want something, gap, 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 gap. You just I, just, I just want it like right away. But one thing I learned from my pre previous PhD, I will tell you, one step at a time. That is how life works. 
you, there are things that no matter how fast you want to move them, you cannot rush. You just have to take it one step at a time. And I'm grateful for that. It has changed my mindset. It has changed a lot of things about me. Okay. You talk about how PhD changed the paradigm shift or like mindset of you, especially. So how does that affect your business? Because there is a age that I realize you are shifting from people that know you and are seeing your status. And you are not just a baker. You are now giving rent of equipment to bakers and the upcoming bakers. And that is an age in a business that in this part of the world people are not seeing. How does that like relate? Okay, so when you have, it's good to have one or two of the things. It's good to have the industry, um, the field experience and the book experience. So being a lecturer, I know I'm, an, uh, I'm a business major. So I have the theoretical aspect, aspect of, business. of business. And being in the industry in different ecosystems, because baking is event and lifestyle and food industry. My seed, seed business is agriculture. Lecturing is education. So you see completely different sectors. So I can see like I have a touch of each. That gives me an advantage. So if you, if you are based in Kano, you will notice how saturated the market is, yeah. the cake market is. It's not capital intensive. With very little capital, you can start and all these young girls coming up, they, they can easily venture into it and they can take care of day-to-day -day activities. So I noticed how saturated the market is. Even though, like when you're com we're, when you're confident about what you're selling, yeah. like you Somebody shouldn't know the taste. Yes, of Mama's is exactly. Competitive. That you shouldn't worry about the competitors. But it is always good to leverage on opportunities. We hardly have weddings now without dessert. Yeah. So, and if you do that dessert, because we are many in the industry, you can go a month or two without doing it, and it's another person, it's another person, it's another person. So you cannot go and invest so much money on buying plates, dessert cups, dessert spoons, dessert, there's something you only use one in a while. And you know the money we make in, be in cake business, it's not... Much. Yes, it is something, alhamdulillah, but it's not something that you can just go and invest millions. Mm -hmm. in buying dessert stands, all those fancy, fancy stuff. Because a normal average dessert stand, six pieces, if you want to make it, you can get it for 150, 200, 250. And if you use it for this event, they don't want you to use it in another event. So I just decided to leverage on that. Since the market is there, and this upcoming baker doesn't have the resources to buy those things for themselves, why don't I just buy them and be renting them out? To so them, so they're supporting their businesses mm. while leveraging on the something like that. I am making my money while supporting them in a way. Since if you're buying one plate, you, you can spend 1000 naira on one plate, 1000 to 1500. While if you're renting, you just pay 100 naira. So if, if you have 50 guests with 5000, your problem is solved. If you are buying, you have to pay 50,000 naira. You yeah, get so it, the capital. Exactly. So I have, is. yes, so um, I think it's something to leverage on and it's great so far. So, like right now, walk me through. Mm. If I am like, if I'm saying I'm venturing into cake business, it will be a new thing mm. because in Kano, most of bakers are female. Mm. I don't know if. We have males as well. Okay, I don't know any. So, if I'm to venture into. What is the best strategy for me, like, to get into that? Market? We can't say there is a best strategy. Like, we all have things that work for us. You, as a business, you have to understand your market and where you want to position yourself. We have. Yeah, the... I think like the positioning is. Look at me. I'm a male. Mm. How's a born and breeding canoe, mm -hmm. and I'm started like, kick. Mm. So. You can say like you are eating from a male baker. So that is the kind of like marketing strategy I'm trying mm. to 
position myself among them. We used to have that cultural issue of a male being a cook, a female being a farmer. With the female being a farmer, we're still trying to adjust mm -hmm. because, because I still face some challenges mm -hmm. in trying to do that. But with baking, as long as you're good, you're creative, you know what you're selling, the customers doesn't care if you're a guy or, or a lady. The taste is what matters. That is all. The creativity, the taste, and the value you are given. So, like, how do you drive all that value? Because... If I will be honest, like a lot of cake bakers right now, if you test, you find like, yeah, this is amazing, this is amazing. Mm. So like, it's very tiny gap provided mm. you are True. leveraging on a test, design or shape or something. Do you yes. think is there anything that I can leverage if I'm starting? Yes. Um, with taste, I agree with you. Just yesterday we had a workshop with my fellow Kano bakers and we were talking about something like this. We said most of the Kano bakers, most of them do sponge cake. You know the, yes. the different kind of right cakes. Right now, we have. like it's milk cake, milk cake everywhere. Like, yes, it's, there is milk cake everywhere. And so I'm telling you the two distinct. Most of them sponge cake. Why? Because it's a chain. You learn from me, I learn from you, I teach this, you teach this. So if you look at the chain, it's like they all learn from the same person. So, so the it, recipe is almost, almost the, same, the same. Almost the same. That is sponge cake. I don't do sponge cake unless, unless it is, is it necessary. Same? I do butter cake. And when I, when I do butter cake, you will, can never differentiate if it is a sponge cake because of how soft it is. So what you will do if in a market like this, you have to get something there is something that is very distinctive that others are not doing. So you can leverage on that. You can take advantage, maybe your customer service. If you are different in that aspect, it can get you customers. Another thing is pricing, where you source your raw materials. Maybe if you get a very good uh, source that you get it at a cheaper price, you can leverage on price. If we are selling milk cake at 2.5, you can choose to sell it at 1.9. I'm sure a lot of people will go to you because of that price. And maybe try to learn as much as possible. Learn from different people so that when you incorporate those recipes to create your own recipe, it will be different from what others are making. Just make yourself unique. It yeah, and the thing I realize from, because I, I love marketing mm -hmm. and it's part of something that I always pay attention to. Content marketing is a thing that from in this market of yours, I realize people are not paying attention to that. We, I eat cake from different people, but some certain times, mm. like, I'll look at your page and, okay, does this look nice? But showing me the process of how that made, mm. it will give me more, like, confidence, like, mm. the process of making things Trust and all. healthy and more. So do you think, like, bakers will leverage on content marketing on their pages to boost sell? Yes. Um, I can say it is one of my weaknesses. I am not really good with content creation, to be honest, because I hardly bake and take a picture. I can bake 10, 15 cakes without snapping a picture. And even if I do, it might not come out the way it should. But all this young, our younger ones coming up, when you see the content they create, or like you wouldn't want to close your phone. I know I can make, give you names that when they snap a picture or they do a video or they create, when they create a content, you will look at it and look at it. You will be wondering, is, this a, is she a baker or a content creator? Oh, can you give me an example? I want to wonder. <laughs> like, personally, passion, I have, I'm, I have passion for food photography because, yeah, I'm a foodie, also the size doesn't show. But I love food and I love, like, the science and the mechanism mm. people mm. follow to create food. So, and sometimes a picture, they say, it can, can exaggerate, but can tell a bigger story, story yes. especially when it comes to test. So, like, can you guide me, like some people? Okay, I really agree with you uh, on that. I have a younger sister that I really love so much. 
My name is Marion Buda. She is good with pictures. There is Lubaba too. There is, uh, yes, Buddha, Lubaba too. Those are the ones that. But for somebody like myself, there is another one, uh, Umul. And there is uh, Bibi, I, Aisha. There is Asma. Who, a lot of us. So the Farida, a lot of us. Okay. The, the people around my age, we are terrible at taking pictures. We always laugh at each other when it comes to taking pictures, creating content. So I think it comes with the generation. Yeah, you are. But when you see Mariam's picture or Lubabatu's picture, wallahi, you look at it. You wouldn't even want to close your phone because of how so amazing. So she has another age, like she can even do photography. She does it. Patients. She does it for for somebody like me. If I have a product that I want to, shoot. I want to shoot, I can just tell her, please, Lubabatu, I want to shoot this. Can you help me do this? She ha she taught several times. We hardly meet without me asking her, Da Allah no Baba Tia Zai Kaza. King got not okay who took Kaza. She will show me, and the next day I will forget. The next time she will show me. Hey. So let's go back to the lecture. Do you have passion for teaching or like? I actually don't see myself doing anything apart from teaching. I love teaching. What is so sweet about teaching? It gives me joy. And um, another thing is, teaching is one profession that gives you satisfaction in terms of how you deliver it. When you know you are impacting knowledge and somebody is going to one day be something because of that knowledge you impacted on him, like it makes, it makes me smile. It makes me not want to leave teaching, to be honest. I'm not bragging and I'm not, I'm just saying, Maybe it is because I don't have it now, but I just sometimes I say, "Ni bangga ko den dasa abia ne dasa mbal lecturer ba." Maybe dem bangga ko den mani amadi. That is how I feel. Maybe, but actually, like, there are people that find joy in sharing knowledge. Yeah, I love share my knowledge, but I, I can't have that ick with academicians mm. because, like, this is how it is been done. You have to do it. No, 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 no. So that kind of thing. They like kill innovation, mm. especially like I can remember during my ND, people were saying like, no need to do project research because the research has all been done. Mm. So that moral of the, there is no like you said, killing innovation. Yeah. Yes, I agree with I agree with you on that. But I can I don't know about other schools, but my school use of metamasili is. It's a different story because I don't know if it is because of the kind of people there. Yeah. Most of us are young. We are just growing up. You and understand the trend. Yes, we understand the trend. And the uh. people at the top, they try to give us opportunity to, allow to yes, to allow innovate, to bring innovation. And I guess I hardly bring something and it gets rejected. Whenever I try to bring something new, I get the support from the school management. I hardly get torn down. So and maybe that is where like the courage, the passion. No, as long as you can know. convince people of the value that is coming out of that thing you are bringing, I think for every for any rational human being or mm. rational somebody, it sh there shouldn't be any rejection, any rejection or, or fallback. Or, in terms of that, unless unless what you are presenting is not good enough, or maybe it's culturally or religiously inappropriate. Okay, people like me, like if I'm talking to you, I can easily convince you and give you the perspective of what I my the idea I have. But if you ask me to write it, my God, that is where the mm. order is. How can you like from me because you are business measure and in a business you have to draft your idea in a paper mm. how do you think we can overcome that okay kind of when it comes to being organized i think that is human nature i used to be like you like i'm just spontaneous i'm still spontaneous in some aspects i i don't plan kawaii we move 
the oven there's okay we just move mm -hmm. yeah. we take care of it and we roll but as you have more on your table you have more things to take care of you have to organize yourself if not some things will suffer i'm a baker i'm a tea, i'm a lecturer and i'm a farmer so i try to allocate time for everything organize everything schedule all your projects between this time and this time i'm going to do this now we just finished our exam so we're given three weeks to mark our scripts i know we have three weeks i will just dedicate two days max two days max i'm just saying i can do it in a day or two but two days i'm not going to do anything i'm just going to mark scripts put the results together and submit i know i'm done with that the remaining 20, 20, 20, 19 days, I can use it to do something. It's just how you plan, how you plan your things. Exactly. And you are a wife, a lecturer, a baker, and a farmer. How do you juggle times between all this? Because especially relationship in northern Nigeria is that kind True. of time and so demanding. Mm. How do you manage and okay. With this, I cannot advise honestly because what works for me in my marital home can might not work for another person. But the most important thing in a relationship is get someone that understands you and get someone who is willing to support you. Because as a woman, no matter how fast or how ambitious you are, how big you want to grow, well, you cannot do it if your husband is not supportive. So try to get his consent. And another thing is, as a woman, make him trust you. If I go out of my house by 9 a.m., I might not go back till, if I have an event, let's say I have an event, night event, I might not go back till around 12 a.m. Maybe I have lectures in the morning. After lectures, I come back, I prepare the desserts or the cake or whatever it is that I'm taking to the venue. I arrange everything, we go to the venue, the party starts, the party finish by 12. How many people will tolerate that? Not much. So you have to make your husband trust you. Just make him believe that whether he is there or not, you, you will protect his, his image, his reputation, his marriage. If I go out, well, I say, what are now? 9 a.m., 9 p.m., without even texting. Hi, Kina Ina, Nanda Ogida, at the venue, we'll call you when I'm done. That is it. So when I come back, if it's not late, I can just text him. I, okay, cause I, and I can go places. See, Nanda, I you come and it and to and shake. Just be open, be converse, converse, tell him everything so that he will trust you, he will know that whatever it is, his marriage, his reputation is safe. Yeah, as you say, converse, like, people that are trying to get married, people like us, or understanding, I was, when you're saying, make your husband trust you, to me, I feel like it's two-way things. Mm. I will have to make yes, my wife true. trust me, too. True. So, you say converse, but I feel like sometimes you can converse with somebody, and if he doesn't have that kind of willingness to understand mm. you how do you create that willingness okay you? that is very interesting my husband is that kind of a person i don't know if you have met amai he is this kind of peaceful quiet annoying person i'll go and carry my gist my gossip engineer kasang akaini kivaki agajia dogolomani you understand yeah. Sometimes I will come and gist and gist and gist. Be answering gist, 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 gist. Church. How much if I can keep I get here the surut? But with time, if I don't do that, yadinga binaena. What is going on? Me akai miki, me yoparu, yopala bari. He will show me as if he's not interested in the gossip. I might still give him the gossip because I know he he wants the gossip. So you do it, and with time, some he will change, and. He's adjusting to. So, like, from a lady's perspective, yes. I'm saying, like, how can I make my woman feel more comfortable, more trusting? 
people like us mm. that are more ambitious, like relate with different people, and in a situation like this, or in a world like this, where a lot of shit are happening, how do you make your woman trust you? If that, as you said, she might, I might not be like man thing to come and start gisting your life. It's on my, it's not manly, true. So how do you think a man can make his woman trust him and understand from your okay. own perspective as a woman? Okay, with, men, with women, you have to show her you don't have anything to hide. There is one thing I always see on social media. Don't touch your husband's phone. Don't do this. When they tell you not to do something, that's when you would want to do it. Yeah, you know, that is a if my husband too. choose to drop his phone here, the only time out and leave the house, maybe I know he won't be coming back till after six hours or something. The only time I will move that phone is if I'm cleaning that place. I don't want to know. Do you understand? He left his phone, you know the password, and he's not coming back. And you can choose to go through it for your own peace of mind. Just have faith and just trust, trust him, knowing Kawai, he won't do anything to hurt you. If he does, it's on him. So just make her believe, trust you that she wouldn't even be interested in, I, he's chasing women, I, he's doing this, I, he's doing that. Just be free, communicate. Yeah, so I should give him my password then. But I, should I know his password, but I don't. Yeah, I don't, because you don't like have to give sometimes her. Sometimes my, like I'm Android guy. When I'm using my fingerprint, mm. it also can allow me to purchase. And sometimes you know women with purchasing, especially Amazon. So it it will give you password and access to all my payments. So that is the kind of thing. No, you don't have to give her your password. And maybe when you're trying no, to. No, I'm saying I can give her password, mm. but not. My fingerprint. What do you have to lose by doing that? Come away. She, she wouldn't she even. Shop a lot. She no. She wouldn't want to be interested in that unless if you're trying to put your password and Tadamas Okuta, you try to pull away. She would want to know what you're hiding. Am I? You're just putting your password. It's cool. She can. I'm just putting my password. Putting my password. I don't have anything to hide. I don't have any, any, anything to hide. If you choose to be chasing me, following me, wanting to know what I'm doing behind, it's on you not on me. I don't have anything to hide. I don't have anything to hide. Just make her believe you, you don't have anything to hide. Yeah. So, right now, like, for people... Okay, I, I'm married. just eight years. I cannot give marriage consultation. Yeah, yeah. Manzoma oh, consultant, yeah. but I still have no. two more years to go. Yeah, what I'm saying mm. is, right now, like, for people that are growing and trying to have dreams, do this, do that, do that, how do you think they can? Can you rephrase the question? People who are ambitious, mm -hmm. especially from this part of northern Nigeria, mm. where we feel like the culture is not favorable mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. women, and even young boys mm. understand that mm. the culture is not favorable for you to grow, mm. especially when you are innovative and open minded. What is your advice for those people from perspective of you as a business okay some of the thing there is one thing i always face in terms of the agricultural issue if i go to rent or lease a land as a woman the way they will treat me you would want you'd you would want to quit why would i take my land and give it to a woman i may matter things like that People think it's nothing, but it gets to you with time. So for you to be able to access land with your own money, to access land, see, I have to say, engineer as my husband, I want, uh, I want to get a land. Can you please help me do it in your name? That is one thing. I'm the one, I'm the farmer, and I, it's my money, I want to do it, but they won't give it to me because I'm a woman, unless... I get a brother or my husband to do it for me. That is one thing. So they have to understand no, if, the term, if the temperature or the condition is not favorable, look for alternative way out. That is the only way for now, but we have to keep um, creating awareness 
that as long as something is not culturally wrong, religiously wrong, why, why don't you give the women opportunity? A woman can nurture. Women are gifted with something. When you give them something small, they can make it. They are nurturers. They are nurturers. So why don't you give them opportunities to explore all these business options? Not saying this business is only for men or this, as a woman, you can only go home and be doing this. You have to be selling from your room. You, we have to keep creating awareness as long as something is not religiously wrong, culturally wrong, I think. Even if it is culturally wrong, I think we can, it's not religious, we, are, we, we can, can still twist it. Yes. If you are to spend a minute or two seconds or two minutes with somebody mm. later of our life, who would that person be and why? Wow. Wow. If I would want to spend a minute or two with one person. The who person who is dead or who is, is either alive. dead or alive, who would that be for you and why? Does it have to be a person? Yes. Or who? Hmm. I'll see my sisters. Okay, not my sisters, my husband. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to create drama. My dad will understand. My mom will understand. They know I love them. But these two. Why? Hmm. I just talk. Alhamdulillah. They are my support pillar. Like, they are my everything. So I cannot be where I am today without them. With my husband, you know how yeah. supportive he is for me to be running three businesses spontaneously. And for my sisters, the emotional support. We have this thing in this family. Like I told you, we are three girls. So what we always see is I, um, I do the financial support. My other sister does the emotional support and the other one does the physical support. So... With these three, we kind of like have a very strong bond. Thank you very much. Thank you really so really much for having you. me. Thank you. Thank you for, if you are here, means you watch or you listen to the whole conversation between me and Zainab Lawal Godebi, where we discuss about a lot of things concerning her relationship, her skills as a business and on a serial entrepreneur and how she's taking a lot of ages to make sure that the condition on all the business uh oh the business has survived in this era thank you and don't forget to subscribe and see you next time